Okay. Um, right, okay, well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Storm Award winning restaurant. Uh, we're very lucky to be here today, and um, the idea is to um, speak to Catherine and find out um, about her book. Um, and also, we have copies here um, that if you'd like to purchase, please do so, and Kat will sign it for you. Um, so, without further ado, let me introduce to you Catherine Sabatina. So, um, welcome to Catherine Sabatina. We're here today promoting um, Catherine's first book, which is called Sweet Jasmine Cakes and Magic. So, Catherine, this is your first book. What inspired you to write it? Uh, well, I've always loved anything to do with urban fantasy, witches, vampires, and um, yeah, anything to do with that genre. Uh, Grew up near the New Forest in Burley. Um, loved a program called The Worst Witch back in '87, um, and I think it just sort of ignited all that passion when I was a little girl. So, how old were you roughly when you first started writing? I remember writing when I was very little at school, but this particular book I wrote, I started writing about five years ago, off and on for about five years. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then, where did you start? How could someone start writing a book? Uh, well, I was doing the washing up one day and this character popped into my head um, and I was bought a laptop and I just started by describing her, that's how it starts, the description of Adriana Jasmine and then the story just followed suit. Yeah. Right, <laughs> okay, so you've written the story, what was the next step to turning it into an actual book? I don't really know, I just... All the characters were very important to me, so I started writing first of all about the characters and then the story just sort of followed and the characters kind of guided me through the story. Um, I can't, I didn't have a plan or anything, it just, just happened. It just <laughs> right. Yeah. Fantastic. And could you tell us a little bit about the storyline? Yeah, it's about a witch, Adriana Jasmine, Mariposa, Popple Apple, Forthright Punch. She's a modern witch who lives in London, master baker. She doesn't want to fall in love because it can put you off life, I suppose. So you get a bit uh, muddled in the head. And she wants to stay nice and clear and just do her cooking and try to bring a bit of magic into people's lives. And then she does, obviously, she meets someone, Taylor Jameson, who's a food critic for Fantastico Banchetto, I think I called it. And um, so it is a bit boy meets girl, but it's not as black and white as that at all. It's, um, there, it's dark, it's light, it's happy, it's sad. There's recipes found at each chapter or um, quotations and quips and things like that. Recipes for cakes and cookies and there's a diary in there. And it, it's, it's not as predictable as you may think it is when you first start reading it. It's, it's slightly different. <laughs> Lots of twists and turns. Yeah, there's a few twists and turns in there. Great. And who have you found is your ideal audience? Uh, female. Uh, the female audience love it. Um, chick lit lovers. Um, people who like Twilight, Bewitched, Harry Potter, um, slightly more grown up. And uh, uh, True Blood, all that sort of genre, urban fantasy. Yeah. Right. Now you've mentioned a few characters' names, um, mm -hmm. which are quite intriguing. Um, what has inspired you to create such um, creative names? Gosh, I'm just a very quirky, creative girl, and I like to make sure that everything that I do is very different and unique and colourful. And it's, the characters are very important to me. They need to be. Uh, people need to remember them, like you remember Harry Potter, you remember um, Hermione, you, you know Bill Compton from True Blood, you know the characters, and that to me is very, very important to have the, to have the characters there, not just the story. Mm, fantastic. And so your book, your first print run sold out, which is wonderful. Um, you've been selling your book in Waterstones, which mm -hmm. um, has just sold out just before Christmas. Um, so how did you work with such a uh, well-known book retailer? I basically got together a marketing pack and wrote to the manager in the store and just said, here's my book, this is what it's about, do you want to stock it? And they were really interested and then I went through their publishing um, company, Gardner's, and the next thing I had a book launch down there um, in 
in September. Yeah. Great. So um, you've enjoyed writing the book, you've created the actual book for people to buy. Mm -hmm. um, you've also um, got a, a version available on Kindle. Yeah. Uh, was that an easy process to get it onto Amazon? Uh, I asked someone who knew how to do how to do it to um, to upload it onto Kindle, and she put it all on there properly. Um, so yeah, it was a little bit. I didn't really know what I was doing, so luckily she did, um, and and uploaded it for me. Yeah. Fantastic. And the the artwork. A lot of people comment about um, how pretty the artwork yeah. is. Um, is that something you've done yourself? It was my idea, because the witch has one brown eye and one blue eye, so I wanted that on the book. Um, and I wanted the jasmine flowers, and I, a friend of mine uh, who's a very talented graphic designer, uh, her name's Araki Morkin, she, I said, this is what I want, and she went, right, okay, I've got it, and she came back with that, so it's perfect, it's just what I wanted. Yeah. Right, um, okay. Um, and also, getting your, your book to the market, mm -hmm. um, is there... Um, are there other places where people can buy the book other than Waterstones and Amazon? Uh, Play.com, uh, off my website, um, there's a few shops local in Bournemouth, uh, Lula Bells and um, Love from Hetty and Dave, uh, if you go on the website it's all on there. Um, yeah. mm, great, okay. So people can buy the book, which is really good. Have you had much feedback? Any reviews? Yeah, I've had some really nice feedback, it's always been very positive and it's always been sort of the same, very colourful, loved the imagination, enjoyed my style of writing, really enjoyed the recipe and the cakes, didn't see whatever came <laughs> coming, <laughs> so it's always the same sort of feedback, mm. yeah, but it's, it's always positive, so... Fantastic. And um, the press in Dorset have taken a great interest in you, um, so where do you live at the moment? Uh, Little down. So you're based in Bournemouth. Yeah. And you've recently had um, an interview with the Daily Echo. Mm -hmm. What was that like being interviewed by the press? Good fun. Yeah. Um, they asked nice questions, <laughs> so I just answered them back truthfully. Um, yeah, it was nice. It was nice seeing my picture and everything in the Echo. Um, lots of people saw it actually. <laughs> Getting people come up to me every day saying, "I saw you in the Echo." <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Great stuff. So, with the book, um, have you got a favourite character? I love the mum in the book, Cicely. She's a very feisty, strong woman, short black bob, very centric. She used to be a dancer at the Moulin Rouge, um, absolutely idolises her daughter. It's really good fun, and if you cross her, well, you wouldn't want to cross her, but she's great. She's, yeah. She's definitely a strong character in the book. And I, quite, I have a soft spot for Carolina Plum, who I based on my cousin Teresa. Because I remember when um, Teresa used to hug me when I was a little girl, she had the most lovely hug. And what I've done, I've made Carolina um, have this magical hug. So when she hugs you, it feels beautiful. And her hug kind of stays with you for hours and hours and hours and just makes you feel lovely. So she, I've got a bit of a soft spot for her as well. Mm. Yeah. Oh, lovely. So the characters are, um, are after people that you know? Only Carolina Plum. The rest of them, no, they're just, yeah, figment. <laughs> My crazy imagination. <laughs> so, um, with writing a book, did you have any challenges? Yep. Um, I hadn't written one before. Um, I'm dyslexic, so processing words from head to writing is tough, um, punctuation, spelling, grammar, very, very difficult. Had to have the book proofread a couple of times. Um, yeah, so that, but I like writing, it's a great way to express, it's very creative, I'm a very creative person, dyslexics are very creative people, so writing is um, a great, great thing for me to do because it sort of gets out lots of um, creative emotions and, and, and target it somewhere, I can put it somewhere, so I enjoy it. Do you get um, a certain type of reaction when people find out that you are dyslexic after writing a, yeah. a bestseller book? Yeah, big time because they don't associate writing with dyslexia, um, it doesn't really go together, so people are like, wow, that's incredible, that's a real hurdle to have jumped over. Uh, yeah, so they, they, people, the initial reaction is shock. 
And so how do you write? Do you use a dictaphone or is it all on no, a laptop? No, I, I write. Or? The computer's great. I don't write very well with a pen. My writing's like a child. It's not good. But the computer's basically been my saviour. And I have to say that my spelling, punctuation, grammar has improved because uh, it will tell you if you make mistakes. I know it's not perfect, but it has actually helped me improve. And sometimes when I get the little wiggly line, the red line, it can um, automatically correct it. But I'm like, no, I'll give it a go. I'll try. And then I'm like, okay, do it. <laughs> but I'll give it a go mm. um, to try and improve myself. But I'm not scared of writing, but there's lots of other traits when you're dyslexic that are probably more of, um, of a barrier than just, just the writing. There's lots of other things involved. It's not just writing and reading. There's so many other issues that I think are probably um, more of a problem for me, especially in everyday life, than actual physical um, writing. You've got poor short-term memory. I hate filling in forms and um, yeah, anything like that. I, I get very, oh, I don't like it. And yeah, my spelling, punctuation, grammar is not good. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, you've you've produced an amazing book that is just gaining such momentum, um, definitely in the south, and it's gradually spreading, which is wonderful. Um, could you give any top tips to anyone that's looking to or thinking about starting to write a book? Just do it. Just start from the beginning. Work your way through. The writing's the easy bit. That's okay. It's the pro the production and trying to get it out there. That's the hard bit. That's yeah, that's where the real work comes in. Get your book, then you need to get your ISBN codes, you need to get it copy protected, you need to get your artwork and get it bound and find a printer that's not too expensive, and then you've got to really work, and that's the exhausting bit. The writing's a nice bit. Get it all up, it's got to be perfect, you've got to find editors and things, that's when it starts to get tough. But no, if you've got a book, write, just do it, write it, and enjoy it. The other bit's really hard. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, um, so you've written the first book. Mm -hmm. Are you writing a second book? It's finished. It just needs to be edited. It's done. It's the sequel. Right. And lots of questions are answered in the second book as well. So, yeah. Brilliant. Okay. So we've got an idea of when that will be ready to. I'm hoping oh. early next year, maybe Easter next year. I just got a knock along with it, it's just been a bit busy recently, but yeah, hopefully um, I want to get it in a book format by April next year, so we'll get cracking over Christmas, because um, I'm not teaching over Christmas, so I can just get on with it, and then hopefully get it all produced for, um, yeah, Easter. Mm. Fantastic. Well, Catherine, thank you so much. It's, it's a pleasure. pleasure working with you, and um, like I say, it's great hearing the feedback of the book. It is really popular, and um, the second print run has just been delivered this week, hasn't it? So it's it's great to get it on the shelves and, and get it out there. So um, thank you to Catherine, and um, if you haven't got the book, we've got them here today. So thanks, Catherine. <laughs>